and this is the GG oops hey everybody welcome again this is the GG rated live show episode number 12 and I'm your host the Iceman and joining me again is Hydra how are you doing yeah doing good my brain is a bit fried of portal 2 but yeah I'm good I'm good <laughs> also joining us is Sebastian how are you doing my friend I am doing well. I am ensconced in StarCraft and uh, it's getting just better and better. I'm practicing commentary and there's too much, uh, too many things to watch, but that is just a very good problem to have. And I'm happy to be here on GG Rated to just talk it all away. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, plenty of action uh, going on all over the place, it seems. Everywhere I turn, um, seems like a new stream has popped up with a new tournament. And uh, I'm just having a hard time uh, picking and choosing what I'm going to watch. You guys finding the same problems or what? Yes. It's becoming a real problem. Uh, there's too much StarCraft to watch, and I, I just can't pick and choose. And I, I tend to become all apathetic and sad about it. And, and then I start watching something. But it, it, unlike a year ago, when we just had a couple of few, few good YouTube commentators holding up the, the flame, now we have too many seriously good productions. I know you, Iceman, will bring something very special to our attention here. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how to pick and choose anymore. What about you, Hydra? Yeah, well, uh, um, I suffer from that, um, that same symptom today. Well, previous week, but today I had a, a lot of issues to choose what, what else to look after because I was always watching VODs. I, I mean, I watched VODs since this early morning and I kept watching until like five minutes ago. I was still watching Xenio against Mana on the NASL and there's a lot of content. But even worse, something that uh, it's um, bothering me a little bit. The content is good, no questions asked, but the way it's organized, I'm, I, don't, I don't know, I need to keep skipping and hopping through uh, websites to search for things. Then I, I find myself going on Team Liquid to take a look at streams. And for example, I looked at the stream list today and I watched there some event that I never heard of, Champions Trophy. And I clicked on it and it was European pro gamers against Asian pro, ga pro gamers. A lot of Koreans there. And I'm talking about really good players. I saw the Korean pros from Code A and Code S being represented there and I saw from U Europe I saw Demaga for example so another huge event that was going on live and I didn't even knew about it and uh, another one that I'm a bit um, feeling a bit sad that uh, apparently didn't get enough uh, promotion enough advertisement is the Stars War in China that uh, now it's currently going through the online stage and you have some huge players there, but I guess we're going to talk about it a bit later on. Uh, basically, I agree with you, Sebastian. Uh, I feel like I'm overdosed, but in a good way. I mean, there's a lot of content to watch, and I don't have a way of handling everything. So I'm, most of the times I find myself checking, is this live? Will they have VODs? Okay, they won't have VODs, I need to watch this. What's the other one? The other one will have VODs? Okay, I'll watch it later. And I need to manage stuff. So, yeah, I think that... Uh, Organization-wise, we need to have some way of having all of this compiled on some location because at the moment, at least for me, Team Liquid has most of the information, but it's hard to browse, and I need that organized on some other website. I don't know. There yeah. should be an app for that, I feel. Hey, something, I don't know. It, it's hard. It's hard to handle everything, but it, it is a good feeling, as you might imagine, because it means that there's a lot of people committed to this, to this, and I saw a lot of good production. I mean, it's not exquisite the best ever, but good stuff that you can sit down and watch and enjoy. So it's, it is a good sign for StarCraft 2, obviously. Yeah. I of feel course. like uh, we could be running a uh, dedicated StarCraft 2 cable channel with the amount of content that we... Uh, we have and it's showing up all over the place, which I would have absolutely no objections to. But uh, Justin TV yeah. seems to be filling that role quite nice, quite nicely for now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but I know you, Jonathan, has something uh, in addition to that that is quite new and uh, potentially quite awesome to bring us. Uh, yes, actually, I do. There's something that uh, just recently popped up, and uh, I think it might have been under the radar for a bit for quite a few people, but. I really want to bring this out to anybody who hasn't heard of it. It is the IGN Pro League, or the IPL. And um, yeah, if many of you guys may know, IGN is a website that is dedicated to bringing people the latest news, reviews, and uh, previews of games and technology and media. 
and they just recently started up their own StarCraft II Professional League. Um, currently, right now, it's titled as uh, Beta Season 1, but um, <laughs> funny thing is, if this is the beta, I want to see what the full version is, because currently, the production quality and the post-production on... Um, on the season one is just immaculate. Everything is of the highest quality and it, one of the most amazing things I think is the stream seems to be in 1080p HD. Um, I was watching just fine in 1080p HD um, for quite some time and then I got a little bit of choppiness so I dropped down the uh, the resolution but it was it was high quality and right now they don't have the biggest name players but the action is still amazing, and I just think that the way that they're producing it and the way that the matches flow seamlessly uh, is something that's very well done. So it's last week we just th discussed the quality of DreamHack, and this week I just want to point out the uh, IPL's quality. And if you guys have not checked it out, it's at uh, IGN.com/IPL. So definitely check them out. And uh, I have the uh, bracket results here for the past couple of days. Um, right now up on the stream, I have the um, IPL results for, I believe, this is Saturday evening. This is the loser's bracket, uh, number one. And uh, it featured some big-name players such as uh, In Control, Chef, Phoenix, TT1, and uh, Minigun. And there's quite a few other big names in the tournament, but I'm just going to go over the results real quick here. Um, we have In Control beating out AGH 2-1. to one or as uh, Total Biscuit calls him, Arg, the pirate. Um, Stalife beating out Sheth, 2-0. Minigun taking uh, the series 2-0 over Machine. And Phoenix beating out TT1, 2-0 in their matches. And uh, let me real quick put up the uh, Sunday evening results. I actually was able to catch um, quite a few of these live last night. And... Uh, I gotta say, some of the action, um, you guys need to check these out. We have Axlav beating In Control 2 1, Star Life beating Spades 2 0, uh, Minigun 2 0 over Druby, and Vi beating Phoenix 2 1. And I'm gonna plug this matchup specifically as my personal favorite so far. You guys have got to go check out the VODs, they're all free, they're all in high quality. Go check out Vi versus Phoenix, because this was nuts. Um, game 3 on Metalopolis, Vibe was just, he was basically matching the mobility of Terran um, Metavax by using Nidus's, Nidus Networks, and he was just, he was guarding his Nidus Networks with uh, Broodlords, and he was just popping out Ultralisks everywhere, and it, I'm telling you, the, the action was just insane, you guys have got to check this out. So, um, I don't know if either of you guys have been able to catch any of the action, any uh, commentary for you, from either of you guys? Well, that game that you mentioned, it does sound like um, the kind of Zerg player I would like to be. I didn't get to catch that, but um, since you told me uh, a little while ago, Iceman, about this tourney, which had gone completely under my radar, I have been checking out some of the content, and I can only agree. Um, I watch it on demand, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's quite stellar, really. And uh, that disc just popped out out of nowhere that's amazing uh, the production value that uh, organizations are now putting into starcraft 2 content it's uh, it's amazing and it, i mean you say there aren't too many big names out there i'd say there are quite a few big names out there and all well worth watching i'll be looking into this tournament next week uh, with lots of interest yeah uh, what about you hydra anything uh, you'd like to comment yeah i um I watch several of the VODs. I really like the production, the quality. It's really sharp. And uh, we do know that IGN mentioned that uh, this is kind of a trial run, the first test. But they have things quite well organized. Um, I realize that I'm not watching most of this through the live stream. But um, from what I checked of the live stream, I, I only checked a little bit because of the time zones here for the Europe. It's a bit messed up. But the quality was just crisp awesome and well the VODs are uh, on excellent quality uh, 720 PHD I think it's 1080 PHD if I'm not mistaken and um, they have yep. some very interesting matches uh, another thing I would like to add is that I don't have anything against casters I enjoy every caster that takes his time to commit himself to uh, provide some content for the community so I enjoyed 
all of the casting, I mean, I can watch things for myself, and as long as they provide a bit of dynamics, I'm more than happy, and that happened. Um, but um, the only thing I want to see evolving, and I'm assuming that IGN is going to take care of that, is the fact that this first trial run is very focused on the North American community. All of the players are from the North American servers. Some of them are very well recognized and solid players. Others, probably they're not the high-end players from the North American side. And um, though we have some nice matches there, yeah, for example, the one that you told me to take a look at the, with the Phoenix versus, um, if I'm not mistaken, was against Vibe, mm -hmm. was really awesome to watch. But I watch other uh, matchups that were really, really cool. And um, I can only recommend IGN. This, uh, this IPL league is very well uh, constructed, very well organized. And if this is the trial run, if this is the beta version, I want to see the final version because for now they're providing really good content and I can only applaud. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, even though, like, as you mentioned, Hydra, the, we don't have some of the most absolute big names, I, I'm really yeah. enjoying getting to know these lesser well-known players by watching their games. And I don't think that anybody can take it away from them just because they're maybe not as well-known. Their play is excellent, and it's really fun to watch them. And I think bringing out these players in the spotlight, which the IPL is doing so, it's high quality production showing these players in this format is going to bring them into a bigger spotlight in the community and uh, I'm, I'm just saying big time kudos to uh, IGN for yeah, this yeah. because it popped up out of nowhere and this is a wonderful surprise but yeah, um, I agree I agree with to be a first step for IGN is a really big one and uh, I'm just impressed I mean the quality is really good and if they're just promising more in the future I can just sit down and wait because I'm thinking that they're going to evolve from the North American community to a more broad broad spectrum a bigger community Europeans and Koreans eventually one day mm -hmm. and it will be awesome to see them clashing against each other like we have on other tournaments and NASL for example right yeah I, I completely agree with you it's it's small right now, but they're handling it in such a, a crisp manner that it's going to be successful and it's going to grow. So they're handling it right to take it in bits and chunks so far and then expand as they move on. So, yeah, it's it's great stuff, so check them out. And uh, I'm going to put up real quick the, um, I'm going to put up the uh, upcoming results. Um, let me see here. The Thursday matches. Uh, this Thursday, guys, you're going to want to tune in definitely because there's some uh, big time players going to be playing. We're going to have Kiwi Kaki uh, fighting against Idra. We're going to have Axe Lab versus Minigun, Cats versus Select, and Star Life versus Vibe. So, uh, yeah, make sure you guys tune in Thursday night. But uh, if you by chance do miss the matches, make sure you check out the VODs. And uh, also, I want to plug a little bit wellplayed.org. Uh, it's a site that uh, seems to be working hand in hand with uh, IGN Group, and I actually just registered our stream with WellPlay.org, and it seems to be a site where they organize live streams and uh, channels. And once they go live, they uh, put them on their site, and uh, it gives people more access to the vods or to the uh, to the live streams. So. Yeah, check them out, and uh, hopefully they'll be developing even more and doing uh, great work for the community. But, Word. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see uh, all these people just popping up and doing uh, really big things for the community. Yeah, we can only applaud them and uh, watch what they have to view for us. Yeah. View what they have to show us. Definitely. All right, guys, you are uh, ready to jump in here to the uh, usual meet. Um, Let's go for the uh, GSL, since we have quite a lot to talk about. We have uh, plenty of Code A matches to go through and plenty of Code S uh, matches to talk about. And uh, lots of uh, surprising results as well, I would say. Indeed. Uh, why don't you take it away, Hydra? I know you managed to uh, watch it all, whereas I only caught some glimpses of it. All right. Yeah, um, well, Hydra, let's go for the Code A first. Mm-hmm. Let's go Code through the Code A and then we'll go see. through the Code S. So right now yeah. I'm going to put up on screen the results for the Code A round of 32. Uh, and this is the day two results. Um, and, uh, well, um, for starters, there was a couple, at least a couple of upsets there. Um, there was a lot of new people, 
new kids on the block, if I can call it that. Uh, there's a lot of new people on Koday. Um, it feels like that um, the comments that you keep hearing about, oh, Koday is a huge battle and getting qualified for Koday is like the second circle of hell. Apparently, that reflects on the amount of new people that we keep, keep, we keep having on Koday. They keep going back into code A and then out to code B and some of them struggle a lot and stay like two or three seasons on code A and then disappear. And um, from all this uh, big uh, uh, group of players, occasionally like a couple rise up and be and are able to grab that cl to clinch that spot on code S. But it seems like there's a lot of instability at the moment. I was surprised by some of the matchups. I enjoyed what I saw. And as you guys can see there by the results, one of the disappointments that I had was Linock because Linock now got thrown to Code B, meaning that he's going to have to fight his way on the offline qualifiers for Code A for next season. He is a Zerg that I like. I don't know, I already made a comment on GG Rated before. The guy reminds me of a July Zerg Jr. physically. Okay, but mentally uh -huh. and on his play style as well, he's aggressive, he knows what to do, but apparently he got crushed on this, um, on this code A, and uh, his defeat, I guess it was a bit um, deserved, because his opponent, creator here from Team Prime, was up to the, um, to the challenge and was able to defeat him. It was a close matchup, but still creator, de creator deserved it, so he's now on code A, and Linock is stuck back to code B and have to fight all the way through that uh, second circle of hell that everyone keeps talking about. Uh, yeah. Then you have Ryang is one of the players from Slayers that is very well recognized. Um, the members of Slayers team says, say that he is one of the main references. Keep in mind that currently I think that only Slayers Alicia is on Code S from Team Slayers. So uh, they have a lot of uh, struggle going on at the moment. I mean, they're fighting their way, trying to conquer some spots on Code S, but uh, they're really close to fail. And uh, obviously, as you might imagine, having Boxer, Slayers Boxer, behind all of it, he wants this to be successful. He wants to get these guys as high as possible. And uh, from the top of my head, the guys that I know that are really solid on Slayers team is Slayers MMA, Ryang is also fairly, fairly well recognized, and Alicia. And then you have, obviously, Slayer's Boxer. But um, I don't know. Uh, they were able to manage on this code A. As you can see, you have Ryang there defeating Revival and the Boxer winning over Avenger. But 2-1 uh, wins, not clear-cut, and uh, hopefully they will keep evolving for the following um, series and for the following seasons. Or else... Um, I might predict that Slayers might be going down with a lot of players for Code B. I hope I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong because they did fairly well on this, on this season here. Mm -hmm. Well, Boxer, as you say, Hydra, he, uh, he has the capacity and the ambition to make his team one of the very best. And he has made that before with SK Telecom 1 in Brood War, the best team that we ever saw. Uh, judging by the, their overall victory. And um, now we have Alicia up there, as you say, Ryang. Um, he seems to be a rising star. And we saw that Boxer indeed uh, uh, took away the win this time. And um, we'll talk about the TSL later. But um, he, he was the only one left standing uh, up there for quite a while. So uh, the Slayers team, they may not be up there yet, but they've shown us that they got the goods to deliver. And... Um, yeah, I can only concur. Uh, we will see some amazing things out of them. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. All right, let's go for okay. day three of the round of 32 of Code A. Yeah. And up on screen should be the results. Let's uh, go take it through us, Hydra. Well, there's a surprise. Well, at least a couple of surprises, as you can see. You guys can see Startail Ace there. The guy was... Um, on the peak of his form a couple of months ago, people were saying he was a beast. And all of a sudden, a new guy from Team MVP, Violet, showed up and crushed them completely. Just destroyed them. Also, keep in mind that it is a PVZ. One of the matchups that people keep, keep uh, um, whining about at the moment because of balance issues and all of that. But it um, was a clear cut there. Violet just crushed Ace. And the MVP team actually seems like to be heading... A different path from Team Slayers. I mean, this is only predictions. Um, it's what I feel because the results Slayers are still doing fairly well. But MVP apparently feels like it's on the rise. Um, August, who was formerly August Wera, got crushed as well by Slayers Yu-Gi-Oh! is fairly well recognized as well. The best for you lost 2-1 uh, against Slayers Men. And then you have 
a player that, in my opinion, shouldn't be here. He should be playing on Code S, but things are how they are. And uh, MVP, if he's here, it's because he lost his matches, so he needs to shape up his game and get back up. But he did show here against Luer, who is um, an unknown player, a new reference, a new uh, player on Team MVP. He basically, basically crushed him and told him, who told you to take my name? I'm going to crush you. And he did. It was basically <laughs> that. Uh, who told your team to take my name? That's unauthorized by me. I'm going to crush you. And 2-0. Done. Yep. Uh, some uh, good results there. Pretty one-sided and uh, clear-cut who was the victor. But um, let's go for the day four. Uh, code A, round of 32 results. And... Uh, Man, things were looking bad for uh, Team Foyu as all their players are uh, seeming to be dropped to the Code B. So yeah. uh, why don't you take us through this one as well, Hydra? Well, I, um, I think I watched these matchups this morning, and um, I saw Choya doing what he usually does, which is talking to himself inside the booth. And he kept talking to himself, to himself even in the end of the game, and he was kind of wrapping up all of his gear, the, the keyboard and all of that. With a bit of violence, I was even thinking that he was just gonna smash us against some of the something on inside the the booths against the <laughs> wall or something. Yeah, he, he felt like he was yeah. really enraged, but he was trying to contain himself. Uh -huh. But yeah, Team Foyu apparently feels like it's crumbling away. Uh, I mean, Choya was one of the well-known players, Linok as well, and they're just gone now. They're gonna have to fight their way back into Kodai again. Also, he was uh, once more against a new player on Team MVP or uh, someone that is still on the rise on the StarCraft 2 scene there, MVP Keen, and uh, he was able to just destroy him 2-0. Choya wasn't able to handle the pressure. Uh, also, as you can see, Squirtle, who was the hero from StarTail on that team event that made yeah, the all-kill. What's, what's going now, on with StarTail, man? This is surprising uh, to me. Well, Squirtle, I will... Squirtle and Ace, who were two of the most well-recognized players on Team Startel, didn't, didn't do very well on this um, season of Code A, and they're both stuck now. They're going to have to fight on the offline uh, pre-qualifiers. But uh, at least Squirt Squirtle lost against another player that uh, it's fairly well-recognized. It's Zenex Coca. He already played on previous seasons, did fairly well. And then you have Noblesse fighting against a new guy, Tassadar, but Tassadar didn't do very well, and he's going to go back into that uh, battle, that circle of hell I mentioned before. So, um, surprises for me here, it's basically Choya for you. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. And Squirtle. But, um, I don't know, it's a sign of the times. What can I say? It, it feels like the community on StarCraft 2 in Korea and the amount of players that are attempting to be pro gamers and try to rise above uh, all, all its peers, um, it feels like there's a lot of them showing up. And there's a lot of people trying their luck on that uh, pre-qualifiers from code B, code B to Code A. And we keep getting new people more and more feeding into this uh, grinding machine that Code A is becoming and transforming into. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, any thoughts, Sebastian? Well, I must admit that I didn't get the chance to watch any of uh, these particular results, though I was sad to see Squirtle go down, because uh, not too long ago he... Uh, impressed us all and we talked about it here on this show with his the beautiful mechanics um, I think it was in the GSL team league in particular that he all killed and uh, it was spectacular now he's out again and as you say Hydra the code A is turning into the real meat grinder where the hammer yeah. meets the, the anvil and uh, those who've made of steel make it out and surprisingly few of them turn out to be uh, yeah. back in the Broodwood days we didn't quite have like a code A a code S kind of thing. It was all just one very competitive blob of a tournament. And if you got in, you got in. Now we have two tiers, two ladders, and code A is turning into the real challenge because uh, everyone is so ferocious and uh, it it's like the mosh pit. And uh, if Stay you get ball. into the code S, <laughs> yeah, then, then you get into the nice seats with the cushions and everything, and you're a bit safe. <laughs> code A, there's nothing safe about it. Brass knuckles and kicks to the groin. We can expect all of that. I like it. <laughs> Lots of yeah, sexual yeah. action. Huh? Yeah, uh. it also it also feels a bit like um, there's a, a strange player shows up. He's gonna meet you, and you're just thinking, is this guy a sniper? Is this just gonna create some really awkward strategy to crush me on this on this match because he wants to survive? And also, I recall the last time I was able to take a glimpse at uh, the offline pre-qualifiers for Code A. 
there is a lot of people there trying their luck. A lot of teams have a lot of players fighting there to clinch a spot on code A. So I think that this competition here on this code A or code A, code B level is really cutthroat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're just looking over their shoulders, making sure that no one will just stab them on their back because it's getting really serious here. I mean, it's a lot of unknown players, but um, they need to come up with the creative strategies and way of taking away the spots from the ones that are already there. So really competitive and interesting for me. Yeah, and uh, it's only going to get more competitive as we uh, look at the Code S matches and we see some surprising names are going to be visiting the uh, Code A uh, mosh pit, as Sebastian put it. So I mean, yes. it's a constant, uh, constant brawl for supremacy in the Code A League, which is uh, it brings out some uh, interesting games. So no hate, only love. But uh, and with, a, sorry, go ahead. And lots of it. Yes, definitely. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna put up on screen the uh, round of 16 matches that will be coming up. Um, round of 16, we're gonna see MMA versus Hyper Dub. Nuts versus Bomber, Creator versus Ryung, and Slayer's Boxer versus Alive. So, yep. Um, yep. for me personally, I'm going to be looking uh, forward to seeing MMA. We know that he did uh, excellent uh, in the last team league, doing mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of uh, saviorship, it seemed, uh, for the Slayer's team. His, his back might be a bit tired from carrying during those leagues, but uh, I want to see how well he does. And uh, Hyperdub is no slouch to GSL, as he's been in uh, just about every Code S season that there was. So um, yeah, and then of course the Emperor himself. Of course. But uh, let's uh, transition into the Code S, where the real meat is. And, Go for uh, the nice cushions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice cushions indeed. Anyways, Code S round of 32, Group A and B results we have on screen. And as you can see, um, in Group A, OGSMC, the Kratos Protoss, has been toppled. And uh, we will be seeing him in uh, Code A next da -da -da -da. season. As well as uh, his team coach, OGS The Wind. Yeah, but um, wait, wait, wait. Don't forget they're still up and down matches, okay? They're still going to oh, face the guys yes, from yes, Code true, A true. coming up. But they are, they are at stake at the moment. They have their spot at stake. And we're talking about big references. Go mm -hmm. ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Yes, yes. I uh, made a slip there. We'll be seeing the up and down matches. And uh, seeing OGS MC in the up and down matches, um, I don't think you would have thought that you would have seen him there. But uh, Pult Prime uh, and Supernova advancing. Um, bit surprised. Uh, any thoughts, Sebastian? Uh yeah, I'm very surprised. That is uh, my main and only thought. Um, okay, we'll get into the TSL later and what happened there and the, the awesomeness that that was. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The point I'm trying to make is that MC is not untouchable. Sure, he went all the way to Sweden. He BM'd everybody, ripped their arms apart like the Kratos Protoss we have come to know. And he went home with a nice custom-made... Uh, plush pylon made by some girl groupie. That's all good and well. That does <laughs> yeah, not yeah. mean that he is an actual god. He can be taken down. By um, um, I, I didn't expect it to happen this way, you know. Uh, MC going down in a, in a less than climactic fashion, or at least a less than climactic opponent. But that's just StarCraft 2 for you. It is so unforgiving. It is, um, and we don't have the J-Dong and the Flash yet. People said that MC, he is the new Bisu. Uh, not quite. He's not quite there yet. And even so, B Bisu did lose himself. Uh, we don't have the Bonjvas of StarCraft 1 yet in StarCraft 2. The game is still being worked out, figured out, and MC is just very, very good at the game. But so are others. Mm -hmm, it's definitely. lovely, I think. Um, Hydra, why don't you go over the uh, results for the Group B while I get the VOD up? Yeah, well, um, surprise, surprise, OGSMC uh, met his fate on this situation. From what I can check here from the results, he faced Pult Prime, who isn't like the biggest superstar ever, but he is well recognized. He's been around the GSL for quite a while. But Paul Prime just had a couple of lessons for him and uh, kind of crushed him. Uh, simply because, um, from what I recall of those matchups, MC risked it, risked it quite a lot on those matchups. I think he was just convinced that 
taking a bunch of small risks will keep him on the lead and, well, makes sense in theory. But Paul Prime, I think he was just aware of that. He probably already checked a lot of matchups where MC did the same and said, oh, yeah, you're going to try to cut corners there. I'm going to crush you. And he did. He just pushed really hard, made some very f solid uh, attacks there, and ended up owning MC. Uh, but obviously, that's not the only result that happened. We have um, MC losing to Polt, OGS the win, who is one of the coaches from uh, Team OGS. He, uh, well, he's, there, he's here on Code S. It's a sign that he knows what he's doing, and he has a very solid knowledge of the game. But uh, he wasn't on par with the rest of the competition, I would say. Um, was people, there was people commenting that he threw his games on favor of the OGS guys. I don't think that's true. But he committed some mistakes that he paid dearer for them and ended up losing his matchups. And, well, now he's stuck. He's going to have to fight his way to survive... Um, this up and down matches and not get stuck in code A. But still, like I, like I was saying, I think his priority is, um, is training, coaching the OGS team and not being a pro gamer full time. So the results he's been having based on that fact are quite impressive. No doubt about it. Um, as you can see here, he's facing Paul Prime, trying his best. We also had, um, he also faced, faced here, let me look, um, the wind faced OGS Supernova. What else do you have as well? MC versus Polt Prime and Supernova versus Polt as well. So um, you ended up with kind of um, at least a couple of surprises on this, um, on this uh, group. Obviously, OGS MC was the biggest one, clearly, no doubt about it. But actually, b having Supernova being the first, I mean, I know that Supernova is the new superstar there. The guy... Um, been uh, taking his spot um, amongst the Code S players, showing us all that he has the skill and he can handle the pressure. But um, I wasn't expecting him to be first place. I was actually expecting MC to be first and Supernova second. Mm -hmm. But well, things are just like this and um, he basically crushed over all of the opposition on that group and show us that he's here to stay and keep in mind he's a young guy so probably if he keeps like this we might have a new M MVP I mean he seems like a solid contender and being um, with this results having this results I'm only expecting good things to come from him on the following seasons definitely yeah um, great uh Great games and uh, interesting matches, as you pointed out. Um, you ready to go for the uh, Group B results, and I'll get the yeah, bod rolling? Yeah. All right, let me yeah. just uh, put the image up again for the Group B results here so people can see them. <clears throat> we have uh, sc 4 u first place in Group B, and uh, OGS Top, uh, second place. So both those players will be advancing as Rainbow and Byun will be falling to the up and down matches. And uh, Hydro, why don't you take it away again, and I'll get the VOD rolling. Yeah, I mean, um, this group wasn't one of the strongest, one of the most solid, as you guys might imagine. Rainbow was um, a big reference in the early stages of the GSL, but um, it kind of came down the, the hill, you know? He's going downhill all the way, and it seems like this time he might be in real trouble. I'm not sure how solid, how consistent his game is currently when he's facing guys that are trying to fight their way out of Code A and have the hunger, have the, the willpower to just fight through those up and down matches and grab a spot on Code S. I think that uh, Rainbow might be in trouble there. Um, SC for you, I mean, the guy is good. I don't have any questions about that. He's been around for quite a while. He defeated Rainbow there, showing that he has what he takes to at least defeat one of the old Brood War veterans. And Rainbow was fairly well known back in the days of Brood War. Um, Bian, I don't know, Bian didn't show much. He got defeated by OGS Top and also got defeated by sc 4 And um, he didn't show much. I think that Xenex Bian doesn't belong to this code S. Um, he needs to shape up. He needs to probably take some lessons out of Sun Zenith, who now is Hosio's son, um, because um, he needs to evolve. He, it's not, this is not the league for him. Mm -hmm. And I think there's people on Code A that uh, could easily take him. Um, I think it's just a matter of time because it feels a bit like the leagues are lagging. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it will take a month to actually see some of these players being filtered out and going it's, back to Code it's A. It's going to take a bit of time to normalize. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think he, he wasn't here. He, does, he didn't deserve being here. He already did some good things in the past, but on this league, it was pretty obvious that he was just getting completely overtaken. And um, he did. He got dominated there. So um, the two uh, players that got the top uh, uh, 
top spots on this group, who was at C4U and OGS top, it was well deserved. OGS top is not the finest Terran player in my modest opinion, but he did fairly well. He studied his lesson. Also, this group, as you guys know, was all Terrans. It's, uh, it was fairly easy to practice against that race and pick up all the details. Though he has some... Um, some uh, inter intricacies into it, as you might imagine, because when you have a group where everyone is Terran, everyone is looking for the little details to overcome your opponent, but still it is easier than trying to memorize and prepare all the openings, all the strategies against Protosses and Zergs and so on. So um, I guess that Top just had a well-learned uh, lesson there and he knew what he was doing and got that second spot. Beyond and Rainbow, well-deserved. I mean, Rainbow w w ended up 0-3, so he didn't, he didn't belong here. He needs to uh, shape up or uh, move out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well said, and uh, nice wrap-up there. Uh, Sebastian, anything you want to add about the uh, Code S Group E results before we move on to Group C and D? Uh, no, I think uh, Hydra has uh, summed up the uh, main points uh, very well. Uh, this kind of, I mean, uh, the uh, now that we left the MC, but going down in the Group A spectacle behind us, um, I think OGS top is an S class Terran, yes, but uh, th this wasn't the sort of uh, stars in your eyes kind of uh, group that um, we will see later on and we will bring up as well. Uh, it's uh, it's simply a Terran versus Terran feast, and the smallest things matter, but perhaps it's not what make us tingle. Um, uh, better luck next time, Bjorn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let us go, go for, for the, the Group C and Group D results. We're going to look at Group C first. Um, first place in this group, we have MB MVP Genius advancing. And second place, we have Losira. So uh, big kudos to Losira. I'm glad to see him continue with his success. Uh, blazing through Code A, winning Code A, moving into the up and down matches, and getting his... Uh, his stellar self into code S and now uh, advancing out of the round of 32 as uh, we yeah. see Kyrix and uh, Hung and Prime fall. And uh, Hydra, why don't you uh, retell the tales from the uh, Group C as I get the VOD rolling? Well, da, 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 da. I, um, <laughs> I like this group. Um, was a bit surprised with the uh, genius, but uh, in a good way. As you guys know, we already discussed this in the previous GG Rated. Genius was kind of a fading away. You guys know that uh, he used to be really cocky and show off, and people were saying that he was bragging a lot, but not putting up the effort and not showing up the skill to back up all the trash talking. But, well, this time he just dominated this group. He uh, took the victory over Lozira. He also won over Hung and Prime, did very well. And um, the second place went for Lozira. Wasn't as clear cut. It ended up with two victories and one defeat. But um, still was fairly good. Lozira uh, just hold up there. He, stand, he stood his ground and did fairly well. Also, um, I keep re reminding people of this. Don't forget that Lozira, I'm pretty sure only sitting on the practice house. He has like Nasty on the side and MVP on the other side. And uh, I mean, it's just some huge practice partners. And the guy can just solve a lot of his issues or polish his game with some of the biggest references on this uh, uh, game. Still... You need to be humble enough to accept those lessons, and seems like that Lozira is that kind of person. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he could be, if he would be like a really cocky guy and was convinced he was the best, he probably would ignore a lot of the, what uh, could be transmitted by Nasty, MVP, and the rest of his team. So, I think he's learning a lot, and I can expect more good things coming out of Lozira pretty soon. Definitely. Uh, about anything? the guys, oh, yeah, yeah, ahead. just a mention about Kyrix and the Hung and Prime. This group wasn't uh, um, the most clear one. I mean, there was some moments where you thought that uh, Kyrix and Hung and could uh, stand a chance there. I was honestly rooting by, uh, for Kyrix. I wasn't expecting Genius to uh, save his spot and keep himself on Code S because of uh, all that happened before and um, the level of results that he's been having on the previous couple of months, but he did. I was uh, actually thinking that Lozero would be first place and Kyrix would be second, but um, I guess that Kyrix um, is just fading away. The last time I recall something epic, a match that I considered epic where Kyrix was involved was a long way ago when he faced Marine King Prime. And... Um, 
after that, I mean, yeah, the guy is hanging around. He's been doing his uh, matchups on Code S, but um, I think it's time for him to move. I want to see other players uh, being given a chance to play on Code S. And, well, Hongan Prime is just he was completely out of shape. Mm -hmm. At least on this group, he wasn't able to handle it. Things didn't work for him. Simple as that. Hungan Prime lost against Genius and lost against Kyrix. So um, I guess he's, he needs to go back and practice his Zerg and um, his uh, PvP as well, which mm -hmm. is, as we all know, one of the most volatile matchups currently. Well, uh, uh, Xenix Kyrix uh, pulled out a little bit of the uh, Action Jesus style uh, play and went for us. Uh, early pool is a six pool or nine pool, uh, both times against uh, La Sierra, and uh, both times it failed. Uh, intense matches nonetheless, but still, I mean, he uh, he opted to go for that uh, cheese play, and it didn't pay off for him, so. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's well, how it went. It, it's a risk, but you know that kind of stuff happens occasionally on ZVZ. Mm -hmm. um, if you go for it, you need to be confident on your micro, because you know that things are going to end up being about micro. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a fairly short match where you can't macro that much. Obviously, you need to keep building uh, the units and keep pumping them to the, to the front line, but you need to be up for that micro battle. And, well, he wasn't, so I guess he needs to practice a bit more. Yep. Alrighty, let's look at uh, Group D. We have in first place uh, Slayer's Alicia coming out, as well as uh, OGS Nada following suit in second place. And uh, I must say, wow, I was just charmed by Nada's play. Um, I believe it was in the uh, first game where he was playing against Marine King Prime. Um, he just had his back against the ropes there, uh, I believe it was in... Uh, Taldarim Altar, and uh, in the very beginning, I mean, Marine King Prime just kept throwing early Marines at him, and Nada just held off and held off, and uh, he was, I, I believe he was almost half the, half the worker count as Marine King Prime, but Nada mechanics just kicked in, and, and uh, he was just flawless, and he came out the victor, and I didn't know uh, how he held it off, but uh, Nada just charmed me with his play in that, uh, that first game against Marine King Prime. But uh, I'll let you take it away now, Hydra. Go for it. The, uh, the Nada games against Marine King Prime, I mean, that was one of those uh, very anticipated matchups. Mm -hmm. And it was brilliant to watch these two guys facing each other. I mean, just couldn't be much better than this. It was awesome to watch them uh, face each, each other here. Unfortunately, Marine King is now uh, stuck with the up and down matches. He ended up with one victory and um, two defeats. Uh, one of them by the hands of Nada. Nada just um, took the win out of his hand. The other one... Let me see, I think he lost against the yes, layers Alicia, who is on the rise as well. But um, something I wasn't expecting was having Alicia on the first place of this group with 3-0. I mean, it's really impressive. So, uh, uh, congrats to Alicia. Here on Nada, well, Nada was just a solid, solid uh, game here. He did very well on his matchups. He knew what he was doing. He committed himself to the right counters to his opponent and did very well when... The result was two victories and one defeat still. He lost, if I'm not mistaken, let me look, against Slayer's Alicia as well. Mm -hmm. Alicia was just beasting this group, I guess. Um, but uh, he ended up with a second place on the group and uh, uh, guaranteeing his spot on Code S. Uh, I was hoping for Marine King Prime to do a bit better. I'm also surprised that Xenio went down 3-0. Okay, Xenio was one of those Zergs that I really liked, even after he was going for a bit of BM with Idra on, uh, on one of the previous GSLs and all of that. I'm not a big Idra fan as well, but um, I think that attitude issues should be dealt somewhere else. Uh, but still, um, 3-0, I wasn't expecting it. Though Xenio was on a very, very difficult group. Alicia is clearly a star on the rise. The guy proved here that he has what he takes. Nada just continue being Nada. He played very solid, though he needs to... Um, keep doing it if he wants to um, evolve on this um, GSL, on this Code S GSL. And I'm a bit sad for Marine King, but uh, I guess he will have to try it another day. He needs to survive now on the up and down matches. Mm -hmm. uh, I did enjoy the uh, Marine King Prime uh, intro video. Uh, it's pretty good stuff, and uh, I thought it was nice to see a little bit. Of, I always enjoy uh, looking into the lives of the pro players and seeing into the pro houses. I don't Indeed. know if, you, if uh, either of you guys were able to catch that when it was being played. 
Uh, not this time, but I believe they've done coverages uh, like that before uh, of uh, other players. And um, yeah, it, it's a nice to get a bit of insight and uh, see the man behind the machine, so to speak. And uh, Marine King yep. Prime is uh, one of the more interesting characters uh, in and outside of the game. And uh, it's nice to see that Gom, uh, uh, you know, have an eye for that, have a feel for that, and uh, do the legwork to provide that sort of fluff. Uh, the sort of uh, plushy pylon kind of stuff that you do need, even though there's nothing plushy about uh, Marine King Prime. I'm yeah. not sure if um, not sure if you guys are looking at the stream at the moment, but you can see Marine King Prime starting the game in Metalopolis and doing lifting his command center, going straight to the rich mineral field and attempting a strategy that, um, well. I haven't seen it being done for a long time. I think I saw it last week on a tournament on um, another moment that we had from Marine King Prime. Seems like he's getting very fond of this opening. But um, on the previous week he failed. He got completely crushed. But on this one he was able to win. And he just crushed OGS Zinio with that opening where he lifted the command center and landed it on that, um, on that rich mineral field in the middle of Metalopolis. And well, you can see the result there. I mean... He just destroyed Zinio, unfortunately, on this situation with a very, very old strategy. That stuff that I, I was used to watch people doing back on the days of the beta and also on the early stages when the StarCraft II came out, the official release. Then it was kind of gone and now we have Marine King Prime using it again. And well, this time paid off, so congrats to him. Still wasn't able to um, guarantee him a stay on Code S, but I guess that with this kind of play, maybe this isn't for Code S. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, it looks a bit desperate and very gimmicky, and you know, Nada prevailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, good stuff, and uh, yeah, great series, and I'm uh, really happy with uh, the games that we're able to view. Um, shall we go for the uh, Group E results, fellas? Yes, go we shall. It. All right, we have on screen Group E, and uh, first place TSL Clyde. Finally, Clyde. let's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Seeing some Clyde power, uh, greatest player in the world, uh, some would say. Um, second place, <laughs> Ness T. Wow, uh, great face-off uh, match against Jinro there. But uh, man, Sebastian, what's going on? You're a uh, you're a hero. Your countryman, your fellow uh, Terran player, Jinro, is uh, now going to be facing the uh, up and down matches. What happened, man? Yeah, I don't know. I. Um... I, I guess we didn't sacrifice enough virgin goats on his altar <laughs> up here in Sweden or something. Uh, I mean, I, I tweeted about it, but um, the people seem to have um, have uh, lost faith in um, well in murdering goats for good causes. I have no idea. Uh, that was not supposed to happen. Um, and uh, uh, do we have vods of that, Iceman? Yes, sir, um, the vods are running yeah. right now. Well, let's uh, let, let's see if we can uh, gather what what's going on here. We see uh, Sun uh, doing a Phoenix Stalker build, and Jinro being the man he is counters that with battle cruisers, banshees, marines, ravens, and um, very offensive um, building placements. And uh, I mean, this got my geek chills going. And um, uh, yeah, this was um, well. this was the first match of the group, and General started with a brilliant strategy here. He went for mass banshee, crushed his opponent, crushed Sun, and then this was just more mid late game when he decided to go for the final push. Where, as you can see, he still has plenty of banshees. They're so effective helping out, backing up on the DPS when you make this final push. And then the battle cruisers were just the the um, cherry on the top of the cake. I mean, when he got to this point, General just had this game completely dominated. And it was the only victory that General took on this group, unfortunately, because it felt like the guy had some brilliant strategies to give us with that first game, and then he just kind of crumbled for the other games and ended up being another victim for the up and down matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you had Clyde. What can I say? I wasn't expecting Clyde to be this good. <laughs> Greatest player uh, in the know, world, man. Come on. Uh, yeah, I know, that, <laughs> I know that Tasteless and Artosis plug the guy a lot, said that he's awesome, beautiful, he's everything in this world. But, I mean, I haven't seen him playing this solid. Look yeah. at him just crushing through Nasty on this he, situation he played here. He excellently. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, great. He did. He did. And... Um, was a bit unfortunate to see Jinro and uh, Hoshio-san going down, but um, this was the group that I 
at least in my opinion, was the death group, you know, the group of death, mm -hmm. where yeah. all the players were good and someone had to lose. But um, I wasn't actually expecting Clyde to be the guy winning here. I was thinking that, okay, Clyde probably might be the first guy to get uh, crushed here, and then let's see between General Sun and ST who's going to get um, the second place to go to the up and down matches. But, well, surprise. Clyde was just on top of his game and took care of everyone. He won against Nasty, he won against Sun Zenith, and Jinro took that first game against Sun Zenith, and then lost against Nasty, and lost against who else? Let me look. No, he didn't lost against anyone else, it was 2 0. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 2 1, I'm sorry, let me look. Yeah, that, exactly, he had those two defeats. So, um, a bit surprised I was hoping more from General, but uh, I guess now he's going to have to fight his way on um, the up and down matches. This apparently seems like we're going to have some very interesting up and down matches, because, I mean, we're starting to have some big names in there, like it happened on the previous uh, uh, season as well. Now mm -hmm. we have General, MC, Marine King Prime, they're all stuck on up and down matches, so we might see some um, big names trying to be crushed by the new guys. Yeah, definitely. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a brutal war in the up and down matches. We will see some uh, big names in the mosh pit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, you guys ready to go for some uh, group F action? We yeah, are. Right. All right. F let's, is a nice letter. Let's see. Let's see the results here <laughs> for uh, the nice letter for Sebastian. We have first place coming out of this group, TSL Fruit Dealer. Uh, Man, this guy is on a roller coaster ride, but he advances. Good job. Second place, yeah. TSL Killer, and uh, we see Czech Prime and Fox Lin falling to the uh, up and down matches. And once again, I will pass the uh, pass the stage to you, Hydra, as we get the vods up. Go go, Fruit Dealer. What can I say? The guy was, uh, <laughs> yeah, the guy took first first champion of the GSL. Then from then on, he was going up and down and pay down. Oh my God! Oh my God! He's gonna disappear. He's gonna disappear. And all all of a sudden, boom! Here he is again. Also, another interesting detail. You guys see how many guys from TSL got um, qualified, got mm -hmm. a spot on Code S. I mean, Fruit Dealer, Kill, uh, Killer. Clyde seems like that TSL is just flourishing. Just um, I don't know. They they drank something or they ate something that just made them Imba Gosu nerds, tremendous beasts playing StarCraft II. I, I actually and, know what it was. Oh, MC, okay, what was MC it? brought some Swedish water back from Jame Hack and they uh, <laughs> they stole it. Oh, you think it was water, man? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead, Hydra. Yeah, uh, I was just saying that impressive, obviously a very good result for Team TSL. And on this group you had the two players that survived and are staying on the Code S are Fruit Dealer and TSL Killer. Fruit Dealer cleaned completely the opposition, Fox Lin, he defeated him, and then he defeated Czech Prime, who is one of the references from the past, I guess. I know that uh, Czech Prime has been struggling for quite a while. Um, not sure exactly for how long he's going to survive with all these new guys showing up. But Fruit Dealer apparently is just renewing himself. From the Ashes, the Phoenix, I think he should change his name, maybe. But uh, it's a good sign because, as you guys know, there's not that many high-end uh, players playing Zerg currently. And it's good to have some nice Zergs. And uh, congrats to Fruit Dealer. The other guy, Sungho Killer. I mean, I know that um, Artosis and Tasteless also plug this guy a lot, say that he's tremendous, he's awesome, a beast. And, uh, well, t on this situation he survived. Let's see how far he can go on this Code S, on this GSL. For now he defeated Czech Prime, and he defeated as well Flox Fox Lin. This wasn't the most solid group ever, okay? There were much harder groups on this uh, Code S GSL. So, they did their job, they defeated Fox Lin, who is a, a big reference as well. He was a, a, he's a very well recognized by the community. Czech Prime as well, but I mean, I guess the Warcraft 3 guys on this situation just got a kick in the butt back into the, into the up and down matches. Let's see if they're going to end up on Kodai or not. Mm -hmm. And congrats to the TSL because they put up a really nice show and have some really good results. Indeed, and um, as you said uh, before, Hydra Group... Uh, E was the group of death, with uh, we saw Jinra going out, etc. Uh, group F, uh, this one, Fox Lin, uh, Killer, and uh, of course Fruit Dealer, etc. Less group Deffy, uh, more like uh, 
uh, groove with some aching pains, uh, aching yeah. pains, uh, yeah. less less fierce, less hard. Uh, not saying it was easy, obviously, but fruit dealer, he's on a roller coaster ride. He needs a good day and a good opponent to yeah. advance, but then he can still kick ass. And I'm glad to see him advance, but. This was not the fierce competition that we saw in the previous group. And um, yeah, that's why we get to see these unexpected results. But good luck to both Killer and Fruit Dealer. I'd love to see them advance uh, and uh, prove me wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, all the action that has taken place so far in the Code S. Um, real quick, I'm going to put up the uh, G&H matches that will be taking place. We're going to see any pro versus virus. We're going to see Ensnare versus Trickster, July versus Rain, and Inca versus Hawk. And uh, this is going to be a, a, quite a fearsome group again, I would say. July, uh, God of War, man. He's going to be tearing people apart. Um, and Hawk, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Hawk. I really, really hope he does well and uh, advances. But uh, we're going to see uh, what happens. Any predictions from uh, either of you guys? Hydra? Predictions? Yeah, well... Huck is going to have a, um, a hard work ahead of him. I mean, Inca is not is no slouch. I mean, he's no uh, no uh, easy pushover. He's going to have a big fight here with Inca. I want to see July versus Rain. I'm rooting for July. I'm sorry. I'm completely biased on this subject. I just love the guy, and I don't totally. think that Rain. I don't think that Rain is even close to what he was before. I mean, the guy already. Did had some good results on the early stages of the GSL several months ago, but he isn't on the same level. And then you have OGS in Snare versus Trick Trickster. I like Trickster. It's Sagisu, uh, SSKS. He had already had a million names. The guy is good. And then you have Any Pro Prime versus Virus. I would like to see Any Pro Prime um, move on. I'm not the biggest fan of Virus, I guess. But mm -hmm. uh, from all of these games, the one that I really want, to, the the ones that I really want to sit down and watch is July and Rain and Huck versus Inca. I would like to see Huck uh, defeat Inca, but it's not going to be that's, easy. That's going to be a tall order. Inca's my yeah, is filthy. Yeah, but keep in mind one thing. Keep in mind that those guys live on the same house, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm pretty sure they talk with each other, and they might be aware of what the other, what the opponent usually likes to do. So um, might be interesting to see this matchup, see how far did they went on the investigation of uh, of their opponent, of his opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they might even be using a bit of reverse psychology there. So. Uh... They'll be thinking one thing, and they'll actually go for the complete opposite of what uh, their opponent would be thinking. So uh, it's, it's going to be a crazy matchup. So definitely looking forward to that. So guys, make sure you check that out, gomtv.net. If you don't already have the season ticket, I uh, recommend you do it so you uh, don't keep getting uh, all the results spoiled here for you. If you don't, yeah. what's wrong with you? Yeah, man. I mean, you <laughs> should already have that ticket, and you should already be watching. But... Uh, that's enough about that. Um, you guys ready to uh, talk a little bit about NASL real quick? And uh, I'll just yeah. cycle through the matches, and um, I guess we can just have open discussion, I guess, about it, since I I tried to catch the stream here and there, but uh, I've been quite, quite busy with uh, finals preparation. I have uh, three exams tomorrow, one the next day, but I uh, tried to yeah, catch as I much as I could, but uh, I'm going to get the uh, results up here and uh, go for it, uh, Hydra. And uh, yeah, Sebastian, I, both you guys can uh, banter back and forth, and I'll chime in. I, well, I watched banter. plenty of it. I watched plenty of it. There, there is some recommended games, I would say. But um, because there's so much to watch, so much to memorize, and because I played Portal 2 today and my brain is fried, I, um, I can't exactly remember everything. But I do know this. I remember that um, there was some matches with Asu Hobbs. I think it was against Goody, where you could finally see on a high-end tournament, carriers. Asu Hobbs had a million carriers. He had carriers, he threw them at Goody. Goody was making one of those 50-minute games that he loves to do, where he just has a million mech units and tries to defend the best he can and just grab as much of the map as possible. And Asu Hobbs just rolled over him and the carriers showed up on the end, on the final bit, like the, the carriers weren't the tipping factor, the, the thing that changed the game into Asu Hobbs' favor, but still they were there and they were destroying a lot of stuff. So congrats to Asu Hobbs for using that unit. At least it shows that in some occasions it's viable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you had also some other nice matchups was Red versus MC, obviously. I mean, everyone wanted to watch that. Surprise, surprise, Red just took MC 
clear cut, just 2-0, no chance whatsoever. Both matches were fairly short. Rhett, I, I'm not sure what was uh, going on on Rhett's mind, but I think he, his mental process was something like, I'm not going to allow this guy to macro. I'm not going to let him stretch his bases. I'm going to try to crush him as fast as possible and see if I can do it. And voila, he did it. Again, let me mention this. I don't have the exact recollection from these games, but from what I recall, the vague memories that I have, MC once again attempted to go for those risky maneuvers that he likes, cutting corners, getting a bit faster to that expansion, um, try to push, make pressure, and expect his opponent to just defend in desperation, screaming all over the room and dropping the keyboard because it's MC appearing on his ramp. And things didn't happen that way. Rat was able to stand the, his ground and crush them. Um, it was an interesting uh, series to watch because it's MC and because it's Rhett as well. I mean, Rhett is quite a good player. Uh, the other series that I would like to recommend is TLO versus Moro. Uh, if um, if uh, anyone if uh, anyone wants to watch that one, um, I would recommend you to check. I think it's game two and game three because um, TLO started pretty well. And then uh, Moro just started dominating the next two matches. And basically what happened, and I think there's pictures of that, Moro was on such a comfortable position that he decided to, when he got to the point in the end of the game where he knew he was confident he would be winning, he made LOLs with creep tumors in the middle oh, yeah. of the map. Then on the third game, he made LOLs with Zerglings and then turned them into Banelings. So you had the Baneling LOL in the middle of the map. So yeah, he was that comfortable. And it's fun to watch. I mean, I like that. Makes yeah. me laugh. I remember you telling me about that. And uh, I, was, yeah. uh, I was basically freaking out when you told me that happened because uh, we haven't seen much of that kind of stuff yet. But uh, it's always nice when you see that. So yeah, no, man. I, I mean... People say, oh my god, it's BM, oh my god, look at his attitude, Moro is crushing TLO, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, for me, that I'm just sitting here watching a guy with his queens putting creep tumors, making an LOL, I laugh, it's fun, okay? Yeah, yeah and, it is. And, I'm, and we're talking about Moro and TLO, as we all know, they're probably establishing themselves on that new house in Sweden, right? Yes, they so are. We're talking yeah, so we're talking about two guys that know each other, and if they even want, they can just talk with each other after the matches and say, dude, what was that? You were making fun of me or whatever. But I don't think the things were that serious. They were just having fun because they know each other personally. It was fun for the viewers to watch. It provided some show there, a bit of uh, fun content, and I liked it. Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't consider that VM. I would consider that uh, something lulzy, a little bit of trolling. Uh, nothing cool. wrong with that. Yeah, uh, I did catch uh, a couple of the matches. I believe I watched the uh, Zinio versus Mana games, and uh, yeah. Zinio did well. He took that series, and uh, I also watched the uh, Idra Cloud series, and uh, Idra won in quite a uh, quite a convincing fashion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what was the match that we were watching, uh, Hydra? And we were talking about the uh, the super long games. Was that um, Pain User versus Goody, Sake, or was it? No, Goody, Goody versus Asu Hobbs. I mean, Goody just has that uh, um, style of himself. He, li he, he likes a lot of mech, and he likes to take it slowly, grab as much of the, of the map as possible, max out his arm, and just start crushing your, his opponent. So you end up with a lot of very long games. Mm -hmm. And the games between Asu Hobbs and Goody were, I don't know, at least two of those matches were over 40 minutes. Yeah, I so, remember uh, catching, I think I caught the tail end of uh, one match and I yeah. saw one full match uh, but yeah, yeah it was, it was craziness things. there's obviously good things coming out of it such as carriers yes mm -hmm. you're only missing the mothership but yeah I, I actually uh, it, enjoy will watching that. it will happen yeah, the only thing best than having carriers there would have would be having Asu Hobbs against tomorrow, and while the carriers would be advancing, tomorrow would be making an LOL. That would be like <laughs> perfect heaven. But still, yeah, it was cool. I just enjoyed it and have a lot of fun uh, uh, just checking that. So yeah, those games were very, very long. Uh, another thing I would like to say, just... Um, I, I remember that on the previous week I criticized and mentioned several things that I found they were wrong on the NASL, and they were, at least for me. Uh, problems with the stream, lag, sound, such on, problems with um, the casting, some, some stuff that shouldn't be heard and was heard because they didn't turn off the microphones. This week, the experience is much better. Congrats mm -hmm. to them. Thank you for providing such nice content. And my experience watching the live stream was a lot better. So 
Yeah. Good news, it's a sign they're evolving. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I was watching uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, with you, Hydra, you usually, uh, you usually key me in when the streams are going and uh, you yeah. encourage me yeah. to catch the games. But I, uh, I was experiencing some lag, but this time around it was uh, quite a bit better, I would say. And uh, it was quite funny. Uh, one time in control was trolling Grey Torp a bit about... Uh, speaking while the mics were off and he said uh, they were talking about Idra's matches and Great Torp was just saying how excellent uh, Idra was saying and if you guys remember uh, last time Great Torp said some stuff about Idra when the mics were supposed to be off and they were on but uh, In Control just trolled him a bit and I uh, thought it was all good fun so nice to see that they're making some advancements. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, definitely. And, uh, you know, uh, Gretok definitely, it, it was a um, mistake of his word. Well, the technical term would be a fuck up. Uh, <laughs> him uh, uh, not knowing that his mic was off and he spoke his honest opinion and maybe he was right, but that's not the matter. It's not professional. But it happened. It's out there. It got tweeted and uh, talked about everywhere. So now they chose to, to use that rather than. Uh, brush it under yeah. the carpet, they take it out there, and in control, very deliberately trolled Gretor, but that is just the way, that's the cross to bear, but now it becomes a lol rather than uh, a troll, uh, that that was a bad rhyme, but anyway, I, I think it's a nice thing of them to uh, de-stigmatize it that way, uh -huh. so uh, good. So uh, Hydra, you would say that the uh, Hasuab's match was the uh, the clear pinnacle for you? You guys are playing with frequency, aren't you? You want me to say more hustle hobs, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hustle hobs. Uh, no, it, you no, it was. say it in such a nice way. Uh, it's got that hubs, rolling H. Hustle hobs. But um, uh, it was the best matches. Uh, uh, I like, listen, I like Goody. I know that hustle hobs is on a tremendous peak of form. The guy is probably one of the biggest, more, most solid Protoss players in Europe at the moment, no questions asked. But um, there was a lot of matches on NASL. For example, I liked watching Idra. Uh, I liked watching Whitera. Obviously, uh, Slayer's Boxer against Sen was an important matchup that I want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to see any match that involves Koreans facing up against Americans or Europeans. Because um, it's interesting to see the way that the buildings, the builds, and the, the the openings translate into the environment you're used to playing. I mean, when you clash someone that plays on the North American server against someone that plays on the on the Korean, sometimes you have some differences. You know, some gaps. There feels like both players are not used to face each other on those terms. And I like to see that. And a big reference to obviously TLO versus Moro because the LOL deserves it. Was cool. Um, one last word, so I can pass the word to you guys. Artosis got owned again, okay? Um, but who didn't see that coming? Now, just a short mention. I know, I already mentioned this. Artosis said on, a, on an interview not long ago that he still sees himself as a player, a first and a caster second. I think it's the other way around. I think Artosis yeah, needs bullshit. to realize... I think Artosis needs to realize that... Um, um, there's someone else outside, there's, there's a, a cowboy that draws faster than him. He, he knows the concept, he knows the theory, but when he sit down to apply it, seems like he's a bit rusty. I'm sure, and I can guarantee you that, that Artosis would crush me a thousand times in a row if required, and he's a million times better than me, that's not even the point. But I know that for him to be on the NASL and take this seriously, as in try to get some points and win something, he needs to actually sit down a lot longer and work a lot longer on his play. Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy casts in Korea, then plays on the NASL, and maybe he doesn't have enough time. So uh, we end up with uh, a poor, poor results for Artosis, oh. but as long as he keeps casting on the GSL and providing us with some nice deep insight into the matches, I'm happy. To be fair, he did play well. He just... Uh, he's not up to the level of Kiwi Kaki, and he out microed him. And oh. it shows that Kiwi Kaki is a player who practices a lot more. I mean, he played well, and he played solid, and he was doing good, but he was out microed. That was the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. And it was PvP, so it was it was a colossi battle there. But yeah, let's uh, let's leave NASL behind and move on to our next topic before we get a uh, a riot from the uh, live stream chat users to uh, to have Hydra start chanting Haswab's name. <laughs> Yes, quite. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to the uh, TSL three action, and uh, we got our uh, TSL three resident expert Sebastian here to uh, carry us through all the epicness that was uh, taking place. 
over the past couple of days this weekend for the uh, round of eight, day three and four. And uh, let's jump right into it, gentlemen. Let's look at the <coughs> first match. We have MC versus Thor Zane in what was an amazing series. Clash of these uh, two powerhouses. Um, uh, uh, Thor Zane uh, uh, uh. on the rise. Man, this guy is just too good. And uh, yes. he just took it single-handedly and... I mean, he bested MC in every way possible. Why don't you uh, explain to the viewers what happened, Sebastian? Well, thank you, Iceman. <clears throat> it was nothing less than a StarCraft player's Christmas Eve. You were thinking <laughs> you were going to get your, nice. your standard Protoss Ownage toy, which is nice and all. I mean, you do like it. Everybody else has it, and it's the coolest thing right now. All the cool kids got it, but what you really want... It's for your particular, uh, more closer to your heart, Terran toy to really is what, you know, you find in your stocking. You don't believe in it, but you hope for it. You have your high hopes up it because that's the sort of underdog. It's the sort of crude wooden thing that uh, is handcrafted, whereas the big uh, uh, corporate machine that churns out the MC ownage, that's just what everybody gets. So when you see Thor saying, the Swedish Terran player um, who used to play Warcraft 3 and who qualified, uh, just as DJ Weed pointed out uh, later on in this very cast, that uh, him as well as all the others that ended up up qualifying through this round they had not uh, received any invites unlike say mc here to the tsl they qualified to the tl opens uh, during 2010 and they grinded their way all the way up to the ladder and here we see this humble swedish nerd who used to play warcraft 3 and uh, now he's facing the very best protos in the world arguably um, and he's dishing out the ownage He's taking him on uh, in a best of five that went to the last game um, in, uh, in what was nothing less than an absolutely stellar game. We could have seen this in the GSL and would have been happy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my countryman, Thor, saying he, he defeated MC because he was the better player. MC did not play poorly. He did not have an off day and uh, he did not do like uh, half-assed uh, lazy all-in strategies or anything like that. He put up a, a good defense, and Thorsane was just better. Uh, Detail-wise, I, I don't think it's this game that's rolling right now. I think that was on Crossfire the, where uh, Thorsane went, as his name would imply, heavy Thors with uh, the strike cannons, and it was a very immaculate unit composition that just tore apart the Phoenix, Colossi, and Gateway army of MC. And that was just beautiful. It was surgical. Uh, and uh, it made me bloom with national pride. And considering what our king has been up to lately with his infidelity affairs, we really needed this uh, here in Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now I have the uh, VOD for Game 4 up. And man, this this game was insanity. Uh, Taldorim Altar proving to be one of the maps that uh, it just seems to crank out epic games. And, um, Word. I I mean seriously every time I every time we encounter this map we have something that turns out to be a huge macro death match where players don't want to attack each other till they're maxed out uh, sitting on 3 4 even 5 bases and then they just clash with massive uh massive death balls and then they're just re-macroing in seconds and the action is fast paced and always coming and and uh game 4 between MC and Thorzane was uh nothing short of uh of epicness, as we saw many uh, many EMPs going off, and um, we did from the underdog. Yeah, plenty of snipes, and I mean, action was crazy. Uh, Hydra, any thoughts you uh, wanted to add to uh, this matchup? I know you were going bonkers as well as uh, I was when we were watching the uh, TSL. <laughs> you were basically leaping out of Skype, telling me to uh, check out these MP, the EMPs, man. You were going nuts, but uh, it was Screw your exam. Let's watch the EMPs. No, nah, it was it was um, it was really cool, and um, I'm not gonna uh, talk much about the match as you guys already basically um, gave uh, more than enough deep insight into this matchup. I just want to uh, tell whoever might listen later for, to this live show or is watching now live to take a look on uh, YouTube's uh, page from uh, Team Liquid because all of these VODs are there for free or even on sc2cast.com all the VODs are there and at least watch the last game, Game 5 between MC and Prayer Thorzane because he used a really interesting strategy really really uh, defying what we are what we're all used to see for Terran players 
and he just caught MC completely by surprise. He got crushed by Thor's and had some brilliant, beautiful moves with um, with ghosts. On one situation, you see the the army from MC splitting in half, and you see ghosts uh, cloaked passing in the middle to the back of the army and just EMP on top of the entire army from MC. It was just beautiful, lovely, delicious, tremendous to watch. I just loved every little bit of it. And... Um, Though it was a really close series, Thor Zane deserved. I mean, he was so creative, did very well against MC, and once again proved that uh, MC is probably one of the top gamers in the whole world playing StarCraft II currently, but he's not alone. There's a lot of people looking at him and people recognizing that he prob probably has the top spot on StarCraft II at the moment, and they want him for themselves. I mean, he's a king, he has a throne, but the kings are dethroned as well. And might uh, be what's happening currently. And I'm um, not expecting Thor Zane to be the hugest, the biggest beast ever. But at least on the TSL, he's revealing himself to be a tremendous player. And I can only w expect to see more of him in the future. For now, I'd like to see him on an offline event. Not offline, you guys know what I mean. On, he's gonna be, when he's physically present on the event and you can see him playing inside the booth. Uh, because these online events al always have um, a different connotation to them, a different um, feel to them, and I'd like to see him live. But uh, congrats to Thorzane. I mean, winning over MC and with the results he's been having on the TSL, I don't have much else to say besides respect and go, go, Thorzane. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, <clears throat> Sebastian here, you have announcements you want to make too about your countrymen. As I have the link up on screen for the viewers, but go ahead and say it. Well, uh, thank you very much. And considering uh, for the uh, podcast listeners, uh, uh, we better spell it out. Uh, uh, smitten by this national pride of mine uh, for Thor Sane, who was very creative. He had truly thought out how to beat MC. S sat there in his nerd room, really funk about it hard, and uh, come up with some tweaks and ideas that uh, he thought would be able to take down the master that the master would not have faced before. And he succeeded. So he deserves our special attention. There's a 17-page thread up on Team Liquid that is Thor Sane's official fan club. Right here on the link right now, you see a masked link uh, that will take you to that very fan club. It's polyconreview.com <laughs> forward slash Thor Sane dash fan club. And uh, just go there and just add your voice to Thor Sane. That's, well, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Because, man, he's a super dude. He deserves to be legitimized by your Team Liquid Shout out. So, polygramview.com slash Thorzane dash fan club. Go there, peoples. Yep, check it out, definitely. Show Thorzane some love uh, as he's been doing awesome work and providing great matches for everybody to view. <clears throat> but uh, I think we should move on to the uh, next matchup, guys. What do you guys think? We should. All right, let's yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next matchup we're going to look at is Kaz versus Adele Scott in... Um, what turned out to be a little bit more one-sided. Um, Kaz took the victory over Adele Scott quite handily in a 3-1 uh, victory. And, I mean, he just showed his Terran strength. Um, Adele Scott is a very good player. He uh, toppled some big-name players to get here. But Kaz just showed him what's up and uh, spanked him. And uh, good series. Well-deserved uh, win for Kaz, I would say. Uh, anything you want to add, Sebastian? No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, I've come to like Adele Scott uh, very much during the TSL. I do like to cheer for the underdog, especially if he's European and if he got qualified all the way uh, through uh, the grueling uh, TL Opens. But Empire Cars, he did the same. And to me, you know, the way a person just uh, macros heavily, has the balls to expand while attacking and, you know, all those little things that you can see if you're a huge stock of two nerd in how someone yeah. plays the game. Uh, Empire Cast just has that little thing that reminds me of a Bratok um, or, s or something <laughs> along those lines. And that's just lovely to see. So I was very happy that he advanced and he deserved it. He played very well. Uh, it will be an epic clash between Thorsane and Empire Cast. Two very different Terrans. And who will be the victor? I hope Thorsane, but he'll have his work cut out for him. This will be an entirely different challenge than ODS MC. And um, this will not be a boring TVT. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, no VODs for uh, this matchup, but uh, you guys go check it out. It's on uh, YouTube. 
and the channel is Team Liquid Net. So if you guys missed any of the matches, go check out the VODs. Um, really interesting stuff. So if you guys have not been following TSL3, I don't know what has been your problem, but obviously you've been under a rock in the StarCraft 2 scene, so <laughs> go check out these uh, matches, man. Do yourself a favor. Um, let's move on to the uh, fourth day of the round of eight, and uh, we will look in on the results for Naniwa versus Cruncher in what was supposed to be a uh, one-sided victory for Naniwa, but it turned out to be a uh, prolonged uh, grudge match, um, no holds barred, winner takes all, where Naniwa uh, just barely squeezed out the victory in game five, and yeah, uh, Cruncher proved to be quite the foe, and uh, he put up a lot more resistance than I think a lot of people expected, but... Yeah, I'm sure plenty of Idra fanboys are happy that Cruncher is finally out, and uh, <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I saw some hate in a few threads, but good series, yeah, yeah. Naniwa, the bad boy, not so much a bad boy anymore, just keeping his mouth shut and doing solid work, uh, serving people up with his great play. Um, any commentary from you, Sebastian? Well, uh, Naniwa, he is um, yet another bad boy on the scene, and I do always welcome those. I think we need that um, anti-hero flair, uh, whatever that entails, but it all comes down to how are, good are you at the game. Naniwa, he owned through uh, MLG Dallas, uh, and now he faced Cruncher. I, I don't quite recall the, the details about their grudge, but I, uh, I did it, watch it the game. Really it wasn't a grudge. It was uh, people expected Naniwa to take it quite handily, but it ended up turning out to be yeah. a lot longer series than uh, people had expected. It but did. Go and, ahead. And, and as we always say, it's volatile, Protoss versus Protoss, uh, quite unlike uh, the Brood War equivalent, which was more sluggish in comparison. And uh, uh, did the best player win this series? I'm not so sure. None of us squeezed out the win, as you say, but it wasn't the sort of epic, climactic, uh, I am better than you, uh, smite with the Thor hammer kind of win uh, it, it, you know um, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see them face again Naniva will be facing the well winner of uh, the next match we'll be talking about in a second and that will be interesting this was this was a very even PvP and to my honest opinion that's not the most uh, epic kind of game an, an even PvP yeah uh, Hydra you have anything to say um, can only say much respect for Naniwa because um, I remember all the stuff the guy went through in the past. He jumped a million teams, he had a lot of issues and attitude in the game towards his opponents and apparently now everything is gone and the guy is just focused and when he sits down and focuses, he just starts owning nerds like a baller. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. I mean, do you guys remember how, where he was like four or five months ago? Yeah, and then he found... Yeah, he found Team Dignitas, apparently settled down. I'm not sure if he found some friends there or someone that just put some uh, sense into his mind, but, or he's just evolving and maturing and growing up. He's a young kid. But um, what I do know is that the results are showing up. So stay in Dignitas, focus, because you're probably going to be one of the guys earning a lot of money out of this game. So make good profit of it. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, I do remember, like you said, Hyder, back... Back a few months ago, he was struggling, and uh, things were different than they are now. But uh, I don't think he's fully developed yet, and uh, he still probably has a lot to learn, as well as many other players. But nonetheless, yeah. he is he's proving uh, proving his skills with the results that he's been putting up. But uh, enough of that. Let us move on to the last matchup between the Emperor and uh, Why don't you tell us who the other player is, Hydra, for all the fans out there? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and now you put me on a i was just ch taking a look at stuff here on the internet to link to you guys and now i'm just stuck here which one are you showing now with slayers boxer versus oh again okay that's why you wanted me to say yeah yeah Hi. Hobbs. okay <laughs> say it, man Mouse Hasu or or Hasu Hobbs or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a really cool matchup, okay? In my opinion, I love to see this uh, matchup here. Boxer played well, but Hasu Hobbs once again just crushing people. I'm not sure what to say about Hasu Hobbs because I, I have some faint recollections of him, like, I don't know, on the 
beta phase two of StarCraft two, and then a bit after the game came out. And um, then I don't remember following him that much, meaning that uh, he wasn't a top reference on the tournament scene. And now all of a sudden, the TSL, he gets involved on the TSL, was the last guy to get qualified for the TSL, and he's just owning everyone. Just keep them coming, I'm going to own all of them. Do you guys remember the old movies with Bud Spencer that he just smashed a big punch on top of the head of the guys and slapped them around with Terrence Hill? Basically uh, the same thing, but thinner. Sorry, Hydra. Grandpa Hydra, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but something like that. You just slap them around. There's no one that even shows up as a contender. Though he has some close matchups, but I mean, he keeps rolling. And the guy, apparently for me, seems like to be one of the finalists. Will the other one be Naniwa? Would be interesting, but um, if we end up with that result, we're going to have another PvP. And uh, people are not very happy with the PvP currently. Um, also, there's another thing, um, though I'm not going to discuss much about this, but there's some rumor that PvP is going to change again on a future patch. Um, I'm not uh, expecting that patch to come instantly, but um, we might be seeing a result that wouldn't happen on a different situation after that patch comes out. I don't know if you guys read about that, but they want to change the, um, the timings to, um, to get the, the gateways built and the, the timings, the units come out of them. I can't be precise now, I don't have the... Um, the exact, uh, the exact note in front of me, but they want to change the way that Protoss play so they can cut down the amount of uh, Forgate play that uh, Protoss players get uh, rolling. And being a PvP, um, I don't know, we might be seeing a lot of Forgate and um, it's not, I'm not the big fan of it, the biggest fan, though I do like to see some Micro Wars. Um, still, if those two players get to the finals, it's deserved. I mean, I'm not very concerned with their race anyway. Uh, Asu Hobbs has been doing tremendously well. Naniwa is showing us all that he's much more mature than four or five months ago. So if they end up being on the finals, will be well deserved. On this specific matchup, well, Slayer's Boxer did try. He did. He had some uh, close situations there. was a very interesting battle. But... Um, ended up being with a clear win 3-0. I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting it to be 3-0, and I felt that on some of the battles there, things could have been going to Slayer's Boxer side. I was expecting a... Um, I don't think that the matchups were uh, very clear-cut, that Asu Hobbs was just owning and dominating over uh, Slayer's Boxer all the time, but the result is quite clear, a clear 3-0, and I was hoping for it to be a five-match uh, five series, and it wasn't. Congrats to Asu Hobbs, and Slayer's Boxer will have another opportunity on another day. Mm -hmm. uh, anything Quiet. you want to add about the Emperor and uh, Asu Hobbs, uh, Sebastian? <laughs> no, um, the... Uh honorable Protoss player from Germany with the interesting name uh, deserved the win. The Emperor played very well. He, he uh, put up good defenses, uh, was, was very all over the place and you know this particular final game at Taldorim Altar which I think was one of the best games of StarCraft 2 I've seen in a very long time. Uh, it was back and forth with those late game as hell. We even saw uh, Protoss Plasma Shield upgrades level 3 being on the field by the end of it. Um, that, that was just phenomenal. And yes, the Emperor made some mistakes, but uh, it's not the fact that pro gamers make mistakes uh, that make them fall. It's uh, the guy who makes the fewest mistakes that will win a game and the guy who manages to capitalize the best on the other's mistakes. And Boxer, uh, as Hasu Obs, uh, did various mistakes, but Hasu Obs was the one that capitalized the best on uh, uh, what Boxer could have done better. And he deserved it. I'm sad to see the Emperor go, but hey man, he lasted all the way until the round of eight in uh, the TSL. And only MC was the other Korean to do the same. Well done. Well congratulated. This is a foreign tournament, apparently. But man, we don't have too many of those historically. So uh, well done by him. Now we'll see Hasuobs show us what he can do. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, just touching on the map again, man, Taldorim Altar, I mean, we were, we were seriously blessed this weekend with some epic PvT matchup on uh, Taldorim Altar. Yeah. We saw yeah. just, about, uh, just about everything you could possibly see upgraded and researched and about every unit, almost every unit, uh, thrown at each other in just massive waves. I mean, some of, the, some of the action I saw was just making me flip out and I was about ready to throw my computer through the wall in uh, sheer yes. excitement, <laughs> but... That's the only one I got, and uh, 
uh, until I get a nice studio with five monitors streaming every match live from every tournament, I got to hold on to what I got, man. But yeah, craziness. It was craziness. Pure madness. Yeah. It was. It was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful madness. Yeah. But uh, guys, that's all we have for uh, this week on the TSL 3. Be sure to stay tuned because the round of four is almost upon us. And if you thought these matches were epic, I'm I'm only assuming that they're going to be just as epic, if not more so, with the uh, best of four coming up and then eventually the finals. So stay tuned and uh, keep checking Team Liquid for everything that's going on TSL related. And uh, shall we move on to our final topic of the day, yeah. the Stars War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, another tournament that uh, popped up almost uh, out of nowhere. I wasn't really paying attention, wasn't uh, expecting this. Um, I remember Stars War from Brood War days, but now they've made the transition mm -hmm. into StarCraft II, and uh, we're going to be graced by the uh, awesome brackets that we have set up so far. Why don't you review for us a little bit, Hydra, what's been going on as I get the brackets up on screen, and well, I will uh, show the results that we've seen so far. Well, just like Frequency is mentioning there on the, um, on the chat, this tournament is not, it didn't pop up now. I mean, I... I wasn't expecting it now because there's so much content that I wasn't paying attention. But this is a, a fairly well uh, recognized event on China. And now, as you guys know, uh, the StarCraft II Chinese version is coming out. They're playing the beta uh, at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they have this big event called the Stars War that apparently transitioned into StarCraft II. And if you guys take a look at that bracket, there's some huge beasts playing that, um, that tournament. And the tournament currently is being ignored. The tournament has VODs on a really um, well-hidden, let's call it like that, stream. It's the ICC Cup stream. I know that there's not that many people going there, and most people don't even realize that the tournament is going on. I'm going to pass the link here to, um, to Jonathan, so he can, uh, to the Iceman, so he can add it there on the... Um, on the on the screen so you guys can take a look at it because they've been stacking the vods with all the games mm -hmm. i mean i saw i saw yesterday i saw the maga versus fox lynn tlo um versus who i don't even remember let me take a look here at the bracket um it was uh, uh, nada versus saza it was tlo versus oh yeah hungan prime exactly i saw nasty versus love cd for whoever doesn't know who love cd is he is the brother of sky the big Chinese references from, uh, from Warcraft 3 is his brother. And as you guys can take a look at the bracket, there's some huge beasts on this tournament, and no one mentions it. I mean, it has a thread on the tournament on Team Liquid, okay? It has some VODs on, uh, on ICC Cup stream on Ustream, and that's it. It doesn't exist. So um, what I'm wondering is, if people are going to miss such event, I mean, they might be missing something really awesome. Just take a look at the names there. I am MVP, Idra, Rhett, MC, Sen, Startail, Ace, Check, Prime. What can I say? It doesn't get much bigger than this. And keep in mind that this is one of the biggest events in China. And China is a tremendous market, huge market. And if this succeeds and if Star StarCraft II actually gets some success in China, it's going to explode. So tournament, the Star Wars from this, um, from this year might be this thing that most people didn't even knew much about it, but next year might be the biggest thing ever because it's going to be exploding all over the internet. I'm a bit um, sorry that it didn't get the attention that it deserved, in my opinion. I've been watching it. I have to thank the ICC Cup stream, obviously, for keeping the VODs, recording the VODs, or else I wouldn't be able to reach them, and uh, hoping to watch the rest on the following days. Now, one small detail. This is being played online, and only the final four players will be uh, flown to China, will be playing there live. So for now, we're just on the, online, um, on the online phase of it with the players playing against each other. It's really nice. I recommend watching this tournament if you have the chance because I know what you're feeling. It's just a, a tremendous overdose of, uh, of matchups and events and tournaments. So it's kind of hard to find out about things hidden such as this one. But I think this is a gem. Take a look at it. It's going to be worth it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, sorry, I used the wrong word there. It didn't, it didn't pop up. Stars Wars has been around a long time as an established tournament. I just have been uh, 
I've been under the uh, under the radar a bit lately, and I haven't seen uh, all the things coming. So when it, it when it came, uh, it was announced. It uh, popped up for me, but uh, I guess I missed that. And uh, sorry for the wrong lingo, but yeah, guys, check it out. I was able to catch the matches, and uh, I really want to recommend you guys watch the Nest T versus Love CD match. Those were quite yeah, good. they're cool. They yeah. were yeah, yeah, really cool. And uh, also check out the uh, Nada versus Saze series, but. Um, Results are up on stream, and make sure you check out the VODs. The uh, link is up on stream, and for the podcast listeners, it is www.ustream.tv slash ICCUPTV. So make sure you check those VODs out if you missed it. Uh, anything you would we like sure to add, will. Sebastian, about the Stars Wars? Well, um, I... Um well, I can only say that uh, if anyone would like to go there, pro gamer or otherwise, I do uh, have the recommendations to a very nice hostel right smack bang in the middle. Uh, other than that, uh, it's uh, very nice to see the Star Wars tournament is uh, once again uh, part of the scene, the new Star Wars 2 scene. I remember back in Brudor, it was one of those few uh, like non-Korean, though still, of course, um, Asian in the sense that uh, it was outside of Europe and North America, but one of those non-Korean events uh, that we had once in a while where we got to see a slightly different flavor of pro brood war, and that, that was always nice, and we got to see some foreigner action. I believe that Tasteless and Artosis represented the yeah, U.S. in yeah, the most recent yeah. one, and, and they, they like to bring that up because they like to think of themselves as actual pro gamers, um, but it was all a lot of good fun back in the day, but it was just you know a minor little... Uh, a b- blimp on the uh, brood war radar. Now this is this could be a huge thing, and anything in Shanghai is huge, uh, uh, no matter how you look at it. And uh, this deserves proper coverage. But this uh, leads us back to what we talked about in the beginning: the fact that it's so difficult to just. Uh, uh, look through the sprawl of Stark of Two content and decide what to watch because you know there will always be something good around and in, even you know uh, I get sort of tired with watching another TLO versus Nesty game I, I the, to differentiate it is a problem and this tournament I haven't watched a single game though now when you guys told me before we got on the chat I just I, I was like oh man this is like old school and new school and in Shanghai epicness but um, how to pick and choose uh, the VODs and the material, the stream they must be easy, they must be accessible must be instant, if you have to dig through a site to find them located at some various um, uh, server or whatever then it's just not good enough it has to be easy, it has to be accessible I want to see Slayer's Boxer and uh, Liquid Jinro and all the other beautiful names on this list but I want it to be easy and accessible because otherwise I'll go to some place where that is the case and yeah 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 they, they, they yeah. need to think about that stuff mm-hmm. yeah Definitely. it's true it's true but uh so oh go ahead Adra. i'm just saying are we uh ready to close our doors for today you still want to mention something um just that you guys need to check out the uh what was it the eu asia and na championships cup or trophy uh what was that that we were talking about earlier today yeah, when, I, when we started the stream, I was mentioning that uh, this afternoon, while I, w- while I was browsing a million tournaments and events and VODs, I was just trying to keep up to date with everything. And um, I found out that was a stream going on. I'm repeating it myself. I mentioned this on the early when we started the, the stream. But I was looking at the stream that was saying something like Champions Trophy, Europe, EU versus Asia. And then I just leaned forward, looked at it, clicked on the stream, and you had like... Most a lot of players from Kodai and Kodas from Korea facing Damaga and other of the top Europeans. And I was just thinking, what the hell? How did I miss this? Yeah. Let me sit down and take a look at it. Um, and it was really good. I mean, it wasn't anything from, the, from another world. It was a nice production, a normal live stream with good quality. And I just sat down enjoying it. And I was watching Maka Prime against another Korean, I guess uh, Startail Ace, if I'm not mistaken, and watch the mag and some other players. And uh, it's one, another of those events that, um, well, at least it passed under my radar. I'm not sure if you guys were aware of it or not. No, it um, passed under mine as well, so I was, <laughs> yeah, I was happy you brought it up to my attention. Yeah, but apparently there's a million things going on, and there's some really good tournaments getting up, and um, if they get ignored, 
I mean, you might be killing something that um, actually was good enough to have a long, long life. Obviously, that these tournaments and this kind of events require some viewers, or else no one will invest on them. And mm. uh, you might be missing opportunities to see some of the best players uh, playing the game currently on uh, such events. I think it was the case. Uh, a bit like Star's War was, um, and uh, hopefully it will be get a bit more... Uh, um, notice uh, people will realize that it's going on if I spam it a bit more here on the, and on my channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, yeah, this week has been crazy. I mean, schoolwork has been killing me, and then on top of that, it seems like every tournament is running right now, and I just am torn between about a million things at once, but that's why we do this show, that's why we get together, and that's why we discuss all the happenings, man. We want to get the word yeah. out uh, so yeah. more people can enjoy what is going on out there. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Sebastian. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, no, I was just concurring and had uh, nothing really suspenseful to add, um, Hydra. Uh, we, we need to grow all the good things that are out there. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, um, for me, a final shout out, shout out for IPL, the new league from IGN. I really love the production quality there. Um, just awesome VODs, mm -hmm. a good casting from all the casters. Uh, um, I never had any beef with that. Um, I know that people dwell a, a lot and focus a lot on the casters and what they're saying. For me, I just want them to provide a bit of dynamics to the game. I'm happy. I can see things for myself. All of them just performed brilliantly. Really good VODs. Also, uh, I only checked a little bit of the stream, but everyone kept telling me that the stream is really crisp, really good quality. Yeah, it is, so, it is high quality. It's like DVD quality, man. Yeah. Apparently, it's going to be a huge event. They're just starting. They, they already stated that this first season is just a trial run. So uh, expect something even bigger on the following seasons. And it's so well made, so well composed that um, I'm assuming you're going to have something there to last a long, long time. And good for them and good for us, the viewers, obviously. So congrats to them by the quality of the product they're providing to the community. Definitely. Big ups to them, and uh, they get the GG rated stamp of approval. So, guys, tune in Thursday. Make sure you check out the matches because it's, it's going to be huge. And uh, I guess that was uh, Sebastian's shout or that was Hydra's shout out. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. Sebastian, anything you want to add? Any uh, inside secrets? You know what's going on over there in Sweden with the team house or anything else you want to plug about your channel? Let everybody know. This is your time. Well, thank you, Iceman. As far as what's going on in Sweden, uh, I, uh, I did try to uh, type to TLO here right now, but um, it seems like he's laddering or just doesn't, don't want to talk to me. There, but I refuse to believe the latter. Uh, I don't <laughs> have any actual uh, insight insights uh, to forward uh, to our beloved viewers as of now. But uh, indeed, I do plan to go and visit the house on, uh, in early June, it looks like, up there in Stockholm. And uh, I will be providing exclusive coverage uh, for my channel and indeed GG rated. Uh, my channel will not primarily be a place for uh, deep discussion because GG rated is. So you do can expect beautiful things uh, from that end to come uh, to this forum in the future. As far as my own channel goes, uh, Easter came and delayed the delivery of my computer. It's expected here on Friday, the 29th, and I've been practicing commentary for a long time now. I can't wait to deliver it to YouTube. And then I'm going to co-cast with you, Hydra. Yeah, for me, you're more than welcome. I'm ready for it. And I heard that you now you have a beast computer that um, works, encodes videos, c clips your toenails, and makes coffee at the same time. So i never seen anything like that. So <laughs> I'm ready to get some 1080p HD VODs done on that. Yeah. Oh, you better. Can't and some to toenail see, clippings. Can't wait to see uh, Sebastian get back in form with uh, posting up his sweet YouTube videos. But... Uh, yeah, it's my turn for shout-outs, and I just want to thank everybody who showed up today, man. Awesome live show today. We had chat going on in the channel the entire time, so big shout-outs to everybody who did show up. Um, guys, this show is about community involvement, and this is for you, man. We do this show so we can bring everybody the uh, latest news, and if they happen to miss anything or if they are not aware of something, we're here to plug that, and we're just trying to do everybody a service. So thanks, everybody, for showing up, and uh, we're going to have big things in the movement um, we're going to have, I'm going to be updating the website here. I know I keep saying this, but I, I'm just about done with the semester. Once summer rolls around, I will get around to uh, revamping the site 
and uh, we have things in the process of uh, development in behind the scenes so you guys can definitely stay tuned and uh, things are going to be moving pretty rapidly here this summer and man I just cannot wait, wait, wait. to see where the show goes go for it I've got a plug you know, just, just help out Frequency a little bit it's just plugging out that t-shirt giveaway signed by Moonglade you don't get that every day um, every time I look at Moonglade it reminds me of uh, the guy from In Excess but that's me and um, obviously there's the link there whoever wants to take a look at it I mean signed t-shirts by a pro gamer a guy that already been on the GSL and is fighting his way in Korea doesn't get much better than that so shout out for Frequency and you guys check the link it just added there on the cast on the, on the chat I'm sorry. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will tweet this link for frequency on our uh, Twitter account. Yeah. But definitely, yeah. guys, keep checking us out. Spread the word to your friends. Show us some more love, and uh, we're just gonna keep uh, bringing you awesome content week by week here. And I'm gonna say GG for now. As the Nerd Trio signs out, this was episode eight of the GG Rated Live Show. Peace. GG. There you go. Yep. All right, guys. Yeah. See you later. Complete.